Hello, everyone. Welcome to how iPipeline leverages Sigma to enable data sharing and true self-service analytics. So I can see people are still joining the Bright Talk platform. So I'm going to let everybody get settled in. But for everybody that's on time, thank you for being here. Uh, we are recording this session, so you'll receive an email afterwards if you want to follow up, review some of the content, or share with anybody else in your organization. As people are joining, this is a good chance to kind of familiarize yourself with the Bright Talk platform. So over on the right, you have the option to post questions. Those questions will go to both me and David, uh, and then we can circle back for some at the end for kind of more of like an open Q&A. There's also a poll option that's going to pop up to make this a little bit more interactive. We get a little insurance trivia question later in the session and another question early on about other BI tools you might be using. But feel free to get settled in, uh, grab a glass of water, and we'll be beginning in just about another like 20 seconds. All right, it's two minutes after the hour, so I want to make sure we had enough time to get through all of our content. But thank you again, everybody, for joining us for this customer spotlight with iPipeline. We get a tight session planned. It's all going to be recorded, so if you miss anything, you'll receive an email. You can share that with anybody else within your company or your organization. But today, we're just going to cover some high-level introductions. I'm going to do a quick Sigma overview. And then I'm going to hand it over to David, who's going to introduce iPipeline and talk through some really interesting use cases they were able to tackle with both Sigma and Snowflake, and also approached from a little bit more of an embedding perspective. So myself, I'm Zach Norton. I'm a technical product marketing manager at Sigma, formerly a Sigma solution engineer. And I'm joined today by David Liebsman. He's the Vice President of Data Analytics, their whole practice at iPipeline. So David, you want to say hi to everybody? Yeah, hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Guess people from all over, nice to meet you. So what we're going to do is we're going to kick off a little poll here, and that's going to pop up in the uh, Bright Talk platform. What we want to get an idea for is just for folks in attendance, what BI tool do you currently use? So is it Looker? Is it more of a Google stack, Power BI, Microsoft, Sigma, more of the cutting edge data analytics stack on top of Snowflake and other cloud data warehouses, or more focused on Tableau, now part of Salesforce and maybe testing out Einstein analytics. But feel free to also answer for other. And we're gonna let that poll run. Get a feel for what other people use. I mean, a lot of folks still maybe just on desktop Excel, hammering everything out on the fly. We do have some existing Sigma customers. So I think for that audience, it's going to be very interesting for them to hear from you, David, about how you embedded Sigma in some of the uh, variety of use cases you approached. Now, what I'll say in introducing Sigma is, yes, we are a next-gen cloud analytics tool for the modern data stack. Now, that's a little bit of a word salad. But to break it down, as opposed to Looker, Power BI, Tableau, or other BI tools, we have no on-premise baggage. We do not have anything that we need to support that's installed in a server somewhere. We don't have previous versions we have to worry about. We've always been in the cloud for cloud data warehouses. Uh, what we do is we further differentiate with a spreadsheet-like interface that allows users that are more familiar with spreadsheet-like functions to be able to get live on large amounts of scalable data. And that's large amounts of data can be very deep, scaling to billions of rows, but it can also be very wide where we're approaching data sets with 130 columns that typically starts getting a little unwieldy in those traditional tools. But speaking of those tools, they are still part of your stack. So we end up being very complementary to existing BI investments. A lot of times traditional BI still has a space and Sigma plays more of that self-service ad hoc role. And the last thing is we are brought to you by the same people that brought you Snowflake. So 
Mike Spizer, the first CEO of Snowflake, he already reinvents the data warehouse for the cloud. So what's his next bet? Why not do analytics now configured for the scalability and elasticity of the cloud data warehouse? And he's a smart guy. He wants a larger total addressable market than just Snowflakes. That's why we play nicely with Databricks. We play nicely with Snowflake, BigQuery, Postgres, and Redshift. But Snowflake is one of our closest partners. Now, the way that we align ourselves with that cloud data platform is we form a live connection. We don't move any of the data out. So Sigma never persists or holds any of your data. We inherit the security and governance that you already have on that cloud data platform and then allow you to perform dashboards and visualizations, kind of the more traditional BI approach, but really drilling into that spreadsheet interface for ad hoc questions, being able to enter in your ad hoc formulas and calculations and drill anywhere. So that's even drill anywhere from in collaborative multiplayer kind of uh, use case, as well as if you wanted to embed Sigma, we differentiate that you can drill anywhere within the data without having to pre-plan where you think that end user is going to go. So a lot of great ad hoc use cases that we usually approach. So I'm going to hand it over to you, David, one of our favorite of our 400 plus customers. But from here, I'll let you uh, take us through more about who iPipeline is. Great. Thanks, Zach, and uh, appreciate that. So um, iPipeline is an organization that has been around for about 25 plus years. We're actually part of a public company called Roper Technologies. Uh, we focused in the insurance, specifically life insurance and annuity space. Uh, we address uh, the full network of uh, uh, basically the financial services industry. Um, we service uh, hundreds of thousands of agents. Um, every, pretty much every carrier or producer of insurance out there is on our platform. A uh, large percentage of the market from a distribution perspective located out of Pennsylvania. And we have offices in uh, Canada and in the UK. Over the lifespan of the company, we have seen billions of quotes uh, as part of the insurance process. Uh, we are the largest uh, e-app provider with regards to applying for insurance. The amount of premium that's been collected on our platform over the last span it raises you know, billions and billions of dollars, and we've protected a lot of lives of individuals out there with life insurance going into force. From the perspective of uh, iPipeline, we are a network uh, company, meaning we sit in the middle between uh, basically uh, sitting in the middle between carriers, which are the producers of, of uh, life insurance products, the advisors and agents that are selling it, and then the institutions and general brokerage agencies that are the kind of distributors that agents and advisors work through. So on an annual basis, we see everything that from all the way from quoting to illustrating what it's going to look like when you purchase insurance, to applying it, to deliver it via e-delivery, and as well as underwrite it and case manage it. So we see a, it's a huge amount of data that flows through our platform. It flows through multiple systems. So those systems are not all necessarily um, you know, integrated throughout all the process. So there's a lot of data that gets, connects through all that. And we basically see what's happening from a benchmark perspective in the marketplace. So from what we did was when we approached everything and going on Zach's point, we, went, we moved to the cloud. So we are cloud first from the perspective of our data. So all that data coming from all our disparate systems, quoting illustrations, download of forms, e-apps, e-delivery, case management, data feeds, et cetera. What we did was we brought all that into Snowflake. So we moved everything into the data cloud. And then as part and parcel of that, we actually addressed uh, providing access for our customers to that data in a very secure way. We developed a portal, which is on the left-hand side, which is a gateway. And we used traditional BI tool, like most people on the call potentially would maybe using. We, we had Power BI in place, and we used that to provide an embedded uh, experience for our customers. But that wasn't enough to provide our customers the capabilities that Zach spoke about. So a lot of our customers have asked for self-service. They want to basically go in, slice and dice the data, get access to that data. Uh, basically, Sigma being an Excel-like tool 
I would I use the word Excel on steroids. Uh, really, with uh, access to uh, the data that's actually secured in the Snowflake environment, one of the key things that Zach mentioned, the security architecture is phenomenal. You don't have to worry about it. Snowflake, Sigma doesn't store the data. The data is actually stored all at the source. So it makes, makes very things very easy to put in place from a security perspective. So when, it, when we look about the embedded analytics that are available through Power BI, basically the customer, our customers really have access to a common interface through a gateway that we provide them to uh, the actual data. And that gateway is very much of a fixed experience, access to certain analytics that are out of the box. And customers can embed that in their portals, as well as they can actually embed them in other of our pipelines UIs. That it looks like from a simpler city perspective, customers log in and they can get access to these predefined dashboards that are giving you certain metrics that are available. And that has worked out really well for a lot of our customers, but it stops right there. So in other words, if there's certain metrics that you want to look at, you want to dive further, you want to get into the analytics, you want to create the ability to log in and not have to come back to our pipeline every time you wanted to get access to something. We have developed now an embedded experience leveraging Sigma. And we've got multiple use cases for that. And I'm going to talk to some of those use cases in a second. But the net of it is, is that now the customer can not only access the self-service through our gateway to give them full access to slice and dice that data all the way back in Snowflake or in if you're using other tools, it could be the same thing. But also the ability to get access to that data that Sigma is producing for us in our Amazon environment, S3. So you can we actually doing it to push information there, as well as access all the way back to Snowflake. So one of the big things that our pipeline has focused on is leveraging Snowflake's marketplace. We provide the ability for our customers to get data sharing of their data. Once they get data sharing of that data, the problem behind that is, is that the business user doesn't really know how to write SQL. So Sigma is a phenomenal tool to allow you to basically interrogate that data at the source. Once again, the data is sitting secure and Sigma is the view into that where you can go in and answer any of those business questions that are coming through your management team to try and get those answers very quickly to uh, your organization. And basically it is accessible through the exact same gateway where now I'm actually accessing Sigma. I can go in, I can slice and dice the data. I can create my reports. I can publish those reports. I can distribute those reports. I can you know, export the data all securely, leveraging the power of Sigma rather than having to come back to our pipeline and say, you know what, I really don't like this view that you've created in the dashboard. Can you modify that? Well, if that's the case, that doesn't work for us because in a, in a SaaS world, the way we've built out those Power BI dashboards is they are you know, fixed in the way they look and feel. They are available to all our customers and they are limited to the extent of, yes, you can filter on the data. Yes, you can drill down. Yes, you can do all those things. But if I want to slice and dice it a different way or do things around uh, you know, differently, which or interrogate that data is really hard. So Sigma has been a, a, a an answer to what I would call one of my dreams. In fact, when I actually looked at Sigma, you know, the background behind it is giving someone an Excel tool, a business using Excel tool, is phenomenal. Against a database that where everything is aggregated, normalized, curated everything like that on the back end, that's fantastic. And that's been our experience. So let me now uh, jump in and talk about a couple of use cases. So the first that we've got, we got three or four, actually five use cases here that I'd like to talk about. First one is around a single source of the truth. Second one is around access to third party data. The third one is how we've embedded the information, how we've embedded Sigma and provided that capability to our customers. The third, fourth one, which I think, Zach, I loved your point about 150 columns. That's actually small compared to the challenge that we actually faced and we actually solved 
this problem with Sigma, which we looked high and we tried for like four months with Power BI and we couldn't do it. And then pushing the data to the uh, report delivery, we're going to talk about how we've simplified that whole process and how we've actually got a significant ROI on that experience. So the first one is uh, around signal source of the truth. So our pipeline is created, not only have we created the actual um, raw content of the, of the, the ODS, which is operational data store of the data coming in from our source systems. But we've also created curated content. And the nice thing about the curated content is we actually package that up in the warehouse. And that warehouse is sitting in Snowflake. So both our customers as well as our internal teams can access that curated data very easily with Sigma to access it. And that gives you tremendous power so we're not having to worry about building out the logic inside a particular spreadsheet. We're building the logic inside the curated layer and our customers are able to get access to that and produce that. So that is one version of the truth, single source. Second use case is around third-party data. So a lot of our customers are using our agency management system to manage all the cases that are being applied for for life insurance, where it is in the underwriting process, what requirements are, wait, are wait, being waited on, is the customer the, the delay, is the agent the delay, where are we at? And part of that process as well is a lot of our customers have got their own CRM systems where they're tracking their opportunities, et cetera. So instead of us having to create a SQL platform where we're gonna send them data back and forth, we've been able to share this information very easily and seamlessly with our customers. So they can actually use the data sharing to integrate the data from our source AMS agency management platform into their CRM of choice either HubSpot, Salesforce, Microsoft, Dynamics, and then leverage Sigma as a simple reporting in interface to slice and dice that data. And basically, our customers have limited data resources on the data side, so we made it really easy for them to be able to combine our data with their data and be able to interrogate that through the environment. And basically, the way that works is that we have provided two options with Sigma. We've kind of used the coined the first phrase Sigma light. That's not a Sigma term, that's our term. And Sigma, right? So Sigma light means our customers don't have to get an agreement in place. There's no IT or security reviews. Everything's under our umbrella. The creating our own data sets, you can't do that without full Sigma. So we create the data sets. Connect to other data sources, it's the, you can't do that. You need Sigma for that, so that's full Sigma. The materialized data sets, we've actually created that curated content already for our customers, and we've created that can go and customize the reports and templates. Single point access, and from an administrator's point of view, we handle that. So a lot of our customers have started there, and a number of them have used that to then migrate to a full-blown Sigma implementation where they now want to take all of our rich content, integrate it with their own, and now they want to go in the cloud because now they've got Snowflake, they've got data sharing in place, and I want to add more data and they have that ability. So the way we've actually architected this from an embedder point of view has been easy for our customers to start, get the power, get the value, get the ROI and then build upon that into the future. And that has made it really easy for our customers. And to be honest with you, every one of our customers, no different to us, has got Tableau, Google, uh, whatever that thought spot, whatever, any number of tools out there. And you know, we are able to augment that significantly for the business user. And that's where it's really made significant inroads for us with our customers. Let's talk about the wide report. You mentioned 150 columns. We wish we actually had 150 columns. So one of the things that, uh, that we had to solve for one of our customers, and uh, I love using this comment. Well, when we actually rolled it out, um, our customer actually said it was like getting a new Porsche when they actually were playing around with it. So not only did we roll it out, where we actually solved a very wide and deep report, 
not only did we allow them to do the wide report, but we also gave them tremendous flexibility to drag and drop additional columns into these reports without ever worrying about it's going to fail, without ever worrying about it's not going to perform, without ever worrying about that it's just going to basically sit there and spin. And so those are the things that we really were able to do here, and it brought significant value to this customer with multiple users accessing this, and it was really a significant challenge. Power BI, we tried everything. We tried import, we tried direct query, we tried everything that we could and we could not solve it with that, with that architecture. And to be honest with you, we actually researched Tableau and other tools like that as well. And uh, no, none of these tools were able to solve from our feedback what we were able to do here. And so this is a significant win that we were able to provide Sigma where we deal with large data sets and very wide reports. And the beauty about this is because the data is materialized in Snowflake, we we're able to take advantage of the best of both breeds. In other words, the best of Sigma, the best of Snowflake and be able to do that. And the last use case that I would like to talk about over here is a lot of our customers request output of information. So in the past, we would use SQL Server, either MuleSoft, SFTP pushing it out there, CSV, Excel. We'd move it securely with move it by using Proscris databases out there. What would happen is it would be a, a, a significant lift and a bunch of resources to be able to do this. Now what we are doing is we've migrated this completely to a very simple architecture. We use Sigma, we set it up, we build the report, we push it to an Amazon S3 bucket, the customer comes in, picks that up for secure delivery, and bang, we're done. And so what we're able to do now with very limited resource or very small amount of resource is solve that from what you saw before with all these other tools. We now use one architecture, one tool, and the customer doesn't even need to know it's Sigma. They get in that report, scheduling the schedule functionality that Sigma provides. Is, is, is fantastic. It's just amazing what you can actually do with it. So that's, a, that's the use case that uh, we were able to deliver on to solve another, another problem uh, where a customer wanted to just get this information and then bring it into the environment and we're able to use Sigma for that. Zach, uh, that's all I have to share. Excellent, uh, thank you, Dave. So I'm gonna open up the next poll and I'm gonna ask you to pro provide maybe a little bit of context here. But the question is, what was the total sum of coverage for purchase policies through iPipeline systems just last quarter? So these are, like if I buy a life insurance policy, I might buy a 250K policy. This is the total sum amount for all of last quarter. And I think this is 10 million, 50 million, 1 billion or 50 billion. So try to get an idea of the scope here. Cause like you were saying, David, this is, um, what'd you say? Billions of quotes, thousands of agents. Okay, most people think it's 50 million. I'm gonna keep that poll open a little bit longer before we reveal the answer. And the way I've heard it put before, I don't know, David, this might be a cliche in your business, but don't they say um, selling life insurance is just selling peace of mind? Isn't that the old adage? Absolutely. All right, so let's uh, reveal this. How much peace of mind did iPipeline process through their systems last quarter? And most people are saying 1 billion. Answer is 50 billion. 12% of the audience got it correct. That is quite a lot to process. And then you're also responsible on making sure that your customers can slice and dice it. So that's the other side of the coin for building out that architecture. That's a lot of responsibility. So I'm going to open up into Q&A and I want to plug it that for folks in the audience, if there's any questions on some of the embed process, uh, anything that you want to ask about you know, life insurance, uh, iPipeline in general, feel free to post those questions. But David, I got a few prepared for you just off the top of my head. Um, first things first. If you were cloud first, was there really any doubt in your mind that there was another way to go ahead and scale for the amount of data that you needed to work with in your ecosystem? 
No. I mean, the, 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 as you said earlier, the key thing was resource to manage the architecture. We went from on-prem to cloud, and the beauty about it is scale. You don't have to worry about it. You can scale as you need, but not only from the perspective of the deployment, but also from the perspective of proof of concepts from anything that you want to do. Cloud, cloud is, is, is the way to go. And not only that, the security architecture is so simple, it's already in place. So no, absolutely no, no question about it. And this whole process, just to put it in kind of a scope of um, how fast you're able to move, I know you were a Sigma customer. I think that was in uh, like February of this year. And how far long back were you a Snowflake customer? About uh, three years now. So we've been Snowflake then, for three years, yeah. And scaling it out with Sigma since the yeah. beginning of this year. Yeah, and our data sharing is, I think that I think one of the biggest things is that the Snowflake marketplace enabling the sharing of data with our customers and then having a tool like Sigma that sits on top of that provides you know significant opportunity because a lot of our customers have a mix of audience right they have techies that are writing sql and yeah. that's great but then they have business users that want to get the questions answered and they don't want to have to go back to the technical folks and they want to access it and that's been you know so without a tool like sigma we couldn't do it it's really really difficult big fan of uh use cases where it's just binary that either works here or it doesn't like that 400 column report that's uh let me guess it's a 400 column report but the business user may want to filter on any one of those 400 columns at any time to slice and dice it <laughs> absolutely that is uh that was one of the requirements and you solved it so that that was uh that was amazing and on uh solving some of the situations like that is there anything um and i know it's only been about seven months rolling out Sigma, but any first hints of pretty definable return on investment? Yeah, I mean, I think that from, a, absolutely. And I think the, the key thing behind it is that um, from our investment in Sigma and the results that we've received from our customers have been significant. Like that particular one, just that one report alone with the size organization that we dealt with, like paid for itself. I mean, we, we, we would have spent that amount of money from a Sigma perspective in just development costs of trying to find something else. And so that alone would be is an ROI. And we haven't, we're just starting, to be honest with you. I mean, like uh, the scale is, is infinite. I actually, and I, I even tell you, one of our customers, uh, we shared with them a, a user license against their data set. They saw such power in it, and they were actually a Power BI shop, that they actually went all in on Sigma with a number of other use cases that they were trying to solve with large, wide reports. So ROI is clearly, clearly there. Definitely uh, ROI and very sticky. Yeah. So I got a, this is a good question from the chat from our actual audience here. This is uh, with great power comes great responsibility, right? So with great freedom on slicing and dicing on the data, was there any concern about some of those business users being able to kind of I don't know, skew the data a little bit too much in their own direction or any concerns about how you needed to lock it down for them? A great, a great question. So we, um, we actually have another complexity behind us because we actually offer benchmarking as well. So with regards to locking down the data, at the, at the point of the Snowflake environment, our materialized views that sit on top of our operational data store is where we lock down the data. So therefore, customers, um, you know, and we also flatten it out in Sigma so it's easy for them. So it's like there's, there, there are some boundaries that we provide the business users that don't get lost. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we actually handle that. Um, and so from the perspective of, you know, running something that may be even too big for them to run, uh, we've already materialized that they're using their own consumption on a Snowflake account. And therefore, we can control that. We also have alerts in place to to let us know what's going on. So that's that's kind of how we handle that. So it's not really that's not our concern. Yeah, totally agree with you. Putting up a kind of a bumper railing so they're not bowling data gutter <laughs> gutter balls on uh, that freedom for access. A uh, little question here: um, How do you see? Uh, 
and you already talked a little bit of materialization, but a little concern here on the chat for performance issues when accessing kind of in the realm of billions of records. So uh, what do you see for kind of any way that you could kind of gate performance benchmarks for like million rows, 10, 100 million? I could talk to what I've seen too. Yeah, so so what we what we've actually done is because we've actually developed our data sets from the ground up, we've actually done optimizations outside of in Snowflake and we've materialized the information there. So when our customers are accessing that compute, even on their environment, we've already optimized it on our side. So like we've got billions of rows people are accessing right now. And I think that I think that this the just the to the point of that 300 column or 400 column times it goes very deep, right? It's a huge data set. So I think it's it's how you architect it that's important. And so it's also how you data how you do the data engineering. So that's what is important here. That's why when you look at the two together, it's like I don't just develop in Sigma. I look at my data architecture together with my Sigma and provide that to the to the customer. That's how we've handled it. Yeah, that's uh, what I found is there are a handful of different levers you can pull to speed up performance on those very large data sets or you know, even just taking into account the number of columns that you're working with, some materialization capability. And then even, you know, let's you probably don't want to run an extra small warehouse on a billion rows, but there's other things you can do to you know, yeah, take exactly. advantage of stuff like cash and all. There's also another thing that we do is we also do a snapshot the data on a nightly basis and we create historical snapshots and then that's a way of you're not hitting against the current data so therefore there's especially for analytics i mean sometimes doing analytics is not really relevant to real time it's relevant to like how good is the data yesterday and that way you're actually able to do that but you're right i mean we actually come up with the best practice approach to doing these things and we size it appropriately all right so I know uh, you already recorded a session for Snowflake Build. Uh, that's going to be a little bit more on the Snowflake half of the architecture, yes? Snowflake uh, and, and some Sigma stuff and how we deployed it, correct. It's much, much more technical. But the use cases are going to be described as we saw today. Great. So I'm going to share my screen because there's a few different upcoming webinars that I want to make sure folks know about. So there is... We see a uh, snowflake build. Is that popping up? All right. There it is. So if anybody wants to see uh, David on snowflake build, any questions more about the uh, snowflake architecture, this is great to sign up for. And one other plug that I have is if you go to the Sigma computing.com website, we have a brand new website with many exciting resources. So we have another event coming up on the 16th. It's a little bit more focused on retail. One of our customers, Veronica Beard, uses us for inventory management. They're also working with a large amount of data that a lot of different business end users with different varying levels of technical expertise needed to slice and dice. But one other neat thing, uh, speaking of embedding within Sigma, is we have interactive demos and we've actually embedded some of our existing templates from Sigma. So any Sigma user can access our pre-built templates. These are Snowflake compute cost templates. I think I actually heard David on a recent call. Uh, Tom Hagen had popped these open. He was pretty excited about what he was able to get up and running real quick for tracking down some of the Snowflake cost of all the other tools that you have plugged into Snowflake. You can see here, this is all very quick to deploy. And there is a whole demo gallery where we are embedding Sigma within our own website. Is another one that's a little bit more around that performance monitoring. So being able to work as an admin, I'm sure that was also, uh, I guess, one last question here from the chat. Um, you have ability to monitor some of what those different users are doing as well within the Sigma usage dashboards. Is that something you've uh, tapped into yet? 
Which which question is that? Can you just uh... so with concerns on um, users downloading detailed data? Are you able to monitor some of like who does what within the platform? Uh, yeah. So um, I mean, there is auditing capability that Sigma has with regards to download some of that that you can get from the back end of that. But to be honest with you. Um, the way we've architected it is that the customer, if a customer is giving access to a user to basically interrogate that data, the customer is taking and downloading it, it's really the responsibility on the customer side to basically manage that. That's how we've done that. I mean, we don't really get involved necessarily in the auditing of that, but it is, it is possible for us to do that. We can, we can produce reports on that, but we haven't had that request coming in. You know, from the from that perspective. Otherwise, we end up managing every one of our customers' environments. And the beauty about this is that we don't need to. All about managing that overhead. Yeah. All right, David. Well, pleasure talking to you. And thanks so much for taking the time to walk us through all these use cases. They're all particularly individual and very helpful just getting out the word about what we can do from an embedded standpoint, really leveraging that stuff like elasticity. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. And... Uh, and the partnership. All right. So folks, check out our new website. Check out David at Build. And I'll catch you on the next webinar. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.